I think that happens with in real life. I think that happens. I think that we are giving people a false sense of reality when we just say these very overarching Pollyannic lines, like just follow what you love and that will be enough. No, it will not. Not always. It can, but I think a better strategy is to follow where your effort is and see where you're putting in the time and wherever that is, you will get stronger and better at it. And that should be what you end up doing. Okay, you guys, this is a topic I really wanted to dive into today, which is this idea of following your passion. You know, I think a lot of times successful people tell other people that they should be following their passion when really, in my opinion, I think what we should be doing is following our effort because wherever our effort is, is where we build reps. And the more reps we have in something, the more time we put into something, the better we get at that thing. And that is where we really kind of find our success. You know, I don't know where the lines got blurred, where it became this idea that we have to have our job and our career be what we're the most passionate about. You know, I love watching documentaries, let's say on Netflix, but I'm not making a living doing that because otherwise I'd be broke, Mm. right? I wouldn't make, make any money doing that, right? But if I did something that I was good at and made money for that, I can then use that to pursue my hobbies, which is my passions. Like, I don't think the two have to necessarily be connected. If, if they are, then you're then great. But a lot of times it's not. And I think there's a lot of pressure on people. And I think to, to have to do that because it's so much in the conversation. It's so much in the zeitgeist, but you know, the funny thing is, um, I did speak about this. I had a podcast with this guy named, well, I'm sure you guys may have listened to it with professor Galloway, prof G. And he's so accurate when he talks about this part, because he says that, You know, if you really talk to the people who are the most successful people in the world, the multi-billionaires, multi-millionaires, they made their money in, in metal, in the (laughs) mines, in doing things that aren't very sexy, that aren't the, the, the jobs, the, the sexy entrepreneurial hashtaggy things that are Googled a bazillion times. It's places where they made a lot of money, but it gave them the opportunity with that money, right. To do all these other things that they love to do. And I think that happens with in real life. I think that happens. I think that we are giving people a sense, a false sense of reality. When we just say these, these very overarching Pollyannic lines, like just follow what you love and that will be enough. No, it will not. Not always. It can. But I think a better strategy is to follow where your effort is and see where you're putting in the time. And wherever that is, you will get stronger and better and and better at it. And that should be what you end up doing. And like I said, a lot of times, like we sometimes actually naturally gravitate to the things that we're better at, that we're good at. I did that with my life and my career, my entire life. And I zigzagged everywhere, right? I was in fitness. I was in music. I was in sports. I was in media training. But the one through line that I had with everything was that I leaned on the things I was good at. And it took me in a lot of different directions, but I found, eventually found my way and it evolved over time. And I believe that's what people should do. So when they are following their effort, they will notice, and you will notice that that effort is very, very much usually in line with where your strengths lie anyway. And if we do that, and we follow that, success will follow. I love that. I think it's really important. It's, I, I was going to bring it up on the execution idea episode. 
of the exact opposite thing that we were talking about with really mundane businesses that just crush and do really well and have great execution and uh, like car washes and like those kind of things like that people would consider boring and maybe not someone's passion mm-hmm. but they allow that person to go travel to go do all these things that they want to do to provide for their family create totally. generational wealth it's like insane i it's the the award ceremony speech phenomenon is what I used to call it back in the day where it's like everyone that's this crazy famous actor telling you to like chase your dreams. And then they just get all, that's where we get all these like sort of starving musician and artists that come to LA and have this, you know, delusion that everyone can make it. And listen, if you can't live without chasing your passion, okay, fine. But I think a lot of people can also, the other thing that happens is if your hobby is your work, there can be the case where like you end up not liking your hobby anymore because it becomes work. It becomes not enjoyable. So you kind of like ruin that pleasure for yourself. So that's a good point. No, I was going to say, um, it happens to me all the time. It happened to me. So yeah. many, so when I was hardcore in the fitness business, like I was like really doing a lot of personal training and I was doing that hour after hour because I went into that you know, I quit all these other career paths and then I followed fitness. And then what happened was I got burnt out and mm. I ended up not liking it anymore because I, I made my passion and my hobby, my actual career. And I was really tired of it. I got super burned out and I ended up leaving it for a bunch of years and went into media training <laughs> because I just like didn't want to work out anymore. Like the one thing I loved the most in life was exercise and fitness and movement. And when I was doing it as my career, it became so too much for me where I was like, I'm over this. I'm like, you know, peace out. I'm going to do something different. And I did that for many years, but then I got back into the health and fitness space. I reintroduced it to my life in a different way, not the way I was, I thought my passion was, right? I thought because I love to work out that if I just work out with people, that's what I should be doing. But really I took that idea and I rejigged it and I loved the business of fitness and figure out a way to work within the, the confines of fitness and health and all that other things and wellness in a different way. That was something I was suited for where I kept on like leaning into because that was where I was naturally, I naturally gravitated to the different businesses that I could build within the fitness business and not do it as the daily workout situation. Mm. So I just feel like I'm a big believer in chasing what you want. But I'm also a big believer in chasing what you're good at because that will follow what you want. They're very connected. Mm. What you're good at and what you want, there's a, they're, they're, they're very closely tied. Yeah, do, doing what you're good at can help you get what you want. Doing what you're good at can absolutely get you with what you want and not like, Lee, if you like to fit, just because you love fishing and just because you love video games, that to me is what, like, that's your passion. Or you love swimming, whatever it is. Leave that as your hobby and your passion. That's okay. And I promise you, you'll be able to do those things more if you lean into what you're actually good at too for the other stuff. Mm-hmm.